Hi guys, welcome back. Okay, a couple of weeks ago, one of my subscribers asked me to do gemstones. And I knew I had a book somewhere that I used to practice gemstones in. This is from a very long time ago. And the book is Adult Coloring Gemstones. Get that there. And it's by Cynthia Colleter. K-L-O-E-T-E-R. And I really like this book because it's got like an open space that I could really get into um, doing different gemstones. And you can see this is from a very long time ago. I did a jasper, um, a turquoise. This is tiger's eye, malachite. A Burmese star. Now, I'm, I think I could do a little bit better than this. This is from, like, back when I first started coloring. So I found this. And today I'm going to do an opal. Now, I'm going to say I'm going to attempt to do an opal. Opals have inflections of iridescent colors in sort of a milky white stone. So instead of my Prismacolors, I'm going to use my Polychromos. And I know everybody's waiting for me to use my new pencils. That's coming too. But I saw a lot of people have Polychromos, and I don't want to ignore that. <laughs> the color palette that I'll be using today is Cream, Matter Lake, Warm Gray 5, Light Cobalt Turquoise, Dark Naples Okra, Light Green, Crimson, Terracotta, Blue Violet, and Warm Gray too. Opals are normally cut very round. Okay, they're very they're high gloss, so we're gonna have lots of light lines in it. So now that I got my white down, I'm gonna start out with my pink or the uh, Matter Lake pencil and I'm going to make tiny little mark like little squares here and there on this stone and just a few Then I'm going to move on to some of the other colors. I'm going to go with the light cobalt turquoise. I'm going to get, what color is this? I don't know the names, Dark Naples. I very rarely use my polychromos. I used it for detail work. And I don't even know why, because I love the way the they're so brilliant. I'm going to put on some crimson. Which is a little bit darker than my other pink. But not too much, because it doesn't have a lot of dark colors in it. And then I'm going to use the green pencil, the light green. Okay, now I'm not sure which one I'm going to end up using. I'm going to start with my uh, polychromos white. And see how that blends. I don't like it as much as I thought I might. I'm going to switch over to my uh, Prismacolor. Yeah, this is more of the effect that I want. I want to really blend those colors in. And at the end, I don't want this spotted. <laughs> like, I don't want 
like a circus clown look on it. I want it very blended into the white. Yeah, I can already see that halo hazy effect starting. Uh, which is exactly what I wanted for the opal. I love doing individual gemstones and trying to get it so that they're recognizable. Everybody does just the plain old gemstone whenever they're doing gems and they don't try other stones and they all are so individual that whenever there's jewelry on a person you can really get creative okay that's more the look I'm going for now I'm going to use the lighter gray and that's the number two. And this is the pencil that I'm gonna to use to start forming the roundness. And since I wanna keep the stone white, I don't wanna add in too dark of colors It's just a very light shadow as it rounds off on the sides. The one thing I do love about the oils is how they don't blend that well. And you can do layers and layers of different colors and still see what's underneath. Okay, that's enough of that color. Now I'm going to get, remember I'm using that as my transition color. Now I'm going to put the little bit of darker gray over it. You always want to use a transition color. When you go for the dark immediately, it never works out. You can always tell. The paper in this book is kind of like normal coloring book, inexpensive coloring book paper that you would buy a coloring book for your kids. But I just like the fact that it had the gemstones on it. This is actually the first time I'm doing an opal. I don't know, I've never done an opal before. I didn't even do a practice one before I did this video. This is me, cold. <laughs> just jumping in and doing it. Seeing if they can do, if you could do it. Nothing explodes if it doesn't work out. I see it in my mind, and if I can't get it onto the paper, oh well. These things happen. <laughs> the funny thing is I didn't even look at a picture of an opal beforehand. I should have. Do as I say, don't, not as I do. This is an opal from the, my mind. Okay, now I'm gonna blend that in with my white so that it doesn't look so harsh. And I maintain the illusion of white. I love when I do challenge pictures. Something I've never done before, and I can make happy mistakes or disastrous mistakes. And 
it's okay because the second time that I do an opal, I'll learn from this. I'm actually liking this. <laughs> I like the way it comes out. I love gemstones. I used to cut them. That used to be my hobby was gemstones. And I had a whole shop, but the vibration on the machines bothered my shoulder after many years. And I had to stop. And that really does look like an opal. I've cut many opals. Do you know that the proper way to store an uncut opal is in water? You didn't, you, they would lose their brilliancy if you stored them dry. We call it flash. And that's the, um, like the, when it spreads out the, like, that array of color. And there's another type called a fire agate, which uh, also has that. And they're among my two favorite stones. You just keep working it. Now that I got the stone, the bottom layer done, I'm going to brighten up some of these flashes that I made. And let some of the flashes meld into each other. Not too much because you want to have that depth in there. So some go to the bottom, some come to the top. Um, okay, now I'm going to tap them down again with the white. Constantly blending. And we'll darken up the edges again. Now that I got lots of wax on the paper, wax and oil. The whole key is to start off slowly and build, build, build. And don't be afraid of that next layer. I see so many people with beautiful pictures, if they just put a few more layers down, blended a few more minutes. Okay, now I'm going to do one more layer of white. My other white. Now you notice I haven't put any light lines on this. I'm going to put the light lines on with Posca. I just find with gemstones it works out nicer. So on, I'm going to get out my Posca. Actually, before I do put on the Posca, I'm going to give it a little bit of bluing uh, on here. Because white often comes out as blue. I just want a little bit of background blue. Not so much over here. But just so that you think that there's a little bit of blue in the stone. And along with the white. Not too much. Now, why did I choose warm gray? Um, because it had a little bit of the green in it. And a lot of different colors that I thought would go nicely. You can use the cool grays, too. Oh, 
Okay, I like that. Got a little bit of the okra in it. The yellow. Just have it peeping through. And I'm doing my Bob Ross again. Okay. Now I'm going to go for the Pasca. Okay, my Pasca is ready. Okay, and now I'm going to tap it down because I don't want such a harsh line. Go over it again so that it blends in nicely. By tapping down your first layer, you're kind of spreading it out so the harsh lines don't look so harsh. Okay, and I'm going to put one more down here. And with maybe a circle and a smaller dash. And there we go. We have an opal. That's a pretty good likeness of what opals look like. Okay, I'm going to finish this picture up. Well, actually not this picture, but this. I'll snap a photo for you. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. I'll see you tomorrow. Adding in two more colors, Indian Red and Burnt Umber. the stones around the opal, I'm going to use light phyllo blue.
to shadow the inside, I'm going to use my Prismacolor Indigo Blue. So here is my opal. I will see you guys tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.